Hi everyone, Evan here, and welcome to my second anti-post selection video for the 2023 Cheltenham Festival. Um, what I'm doing here is a short eight-part series. We started last week as we approached the festival, and we're currently seven weeks out from that festival. Um, as of yesterday, I'm recording this on Wednesday the 25th of January. I I'm trying to put up a horse that I believe is currently, you know, good value in the market, that I believe has a good chance to win the race, or the odds are, you know, much bigger than what I believe the horse's chances are. Um, doesn't necessarily fall into my normal style of betting. Normally I like to, you know, value bet from a long way out, from maybe 20, 30 weeks out, and pick a horse or a selection that I believe will shorten as you know, it runs in different races or as the markets develop, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um but we've only got a short time to do it. I wanted to start my YouTube video early. We'll look at all those kind of um, you know value bets next season with the channel. Um, but yeah, like I said, last week we put up the first video. Um, Queen's Gamble was the selection. She has actually shortened for the bumper now into seven to one. So hopefully a few people got a little bit of value there. Um, we, doubt, we do now have a new favourite for the race after It's For Me came out and won impressively. In fact, the champion bumper is a race that... I'm actually really excited about it. It's, it's really interesting and um, yeah, lots of cases can be made for lots of horses. Um, but if you did like that video, if you do like this video, please do subscribe to my channel, like the video, drop me a comment if you um, have any thoughts. But without further ado, let's get on to the second selection. So for my second selection, uh, I've tried to find a horse that I believe represents good value. Um, it's a slightly bigger price. But the way in which I tend to do most of my analysis um, is by looking at form lines, i.e. what the horse has run against and what those horses have then gone to do after. So lots of people analyse in different ways. Some people focus on speed figures. Some people you know, use the tried and trusted eye test. Um, but I really like to look at form, um, which has worked for me in the past and um, is my main basis. So I believe this horse has got good form lines and I'll come on to that later in the video um, but my first or sorry my second selection uh, is Dark Raven at 33 to 1 for the Ballymore. Um, entries came out yesterday for the Novice Hurdle division and Dark Raven has an entry in both the Supreme and the Ballymore. Um, I believe, and it's really tough to predict where Willie Mullins is going to send his horses, but I believe Dark Raven um, will end up in the Ballymore. The horse um, suffered, well, came out and ran its first race in early 2021, then its second race in um, early 2021, and then suffered a setback, and we didn't see him last season. Uh, but then he came out again in December, and I'll go through those those form and those races in a second. Um but the horse was always, you know, talked about as being a longer distance horse, potentially moving up to, you know, the three mile chase division in time. Um, and that's why I believe that we might see a little bit more distance up in trip to the Ballymore rather than the Supreme. Um, but yeah, it's always tough to predict um, where Willie Mullins' horses are going to go. Um, but I believe if this horse is genuinely good enough um, to win one of those races, you know, Willie Mullins has already got the favourite in the Supreme. Um, therefore, why not enter in the Ballymore? Um, and that probably suits the profile of this horse too. Um, I want to start by looking at the other entries that Willie Mullins has got in this race. Um, Champ, well, in the kind of bracket of 10 to 1 and under. Uh, Champ Kylie currently sits at 7 to 1 on Skybet. We saw him win the Laura of Nace in what was probably a or one of the most competitive races over the middle distance we've seen this season. Um, against good opposition, a strange race though, because <clears throat> it turned into you know a bit of a bumper um, in the end. With I think the last three hurdles were omitted. Um, so yes, he won that, but that form you know is is strange, shall we say, for the time being. Um, even though you know an impressive win. Um, Gaelic Warrior is also entered in the Ballymore. Currently, a price of six to one. Um, also got a supreme entry. Also, we could see him in handicaps. Who knows where Gaelic Warrior is going to go? It's been kind of the um, enigma horse of this season so far as we build up to the festival. <clears throat> um, I think, honestly, he will probably go to the Ballymore if I had to put money on it. Um, but could land anywhere. So, again, question marks around that. Um, and finally, <clears throat> Impere Pass at 10-3. to 3, Currently second favourite for this race, for the Ballymore. Um, 
has run twice and looked very good on both of those runs. But I don't necessarily believe those form lines are, you know, massively more impressive than Dark, Dark Raven, who currently sits at 33 to 1. Um, yes, on Impere Pass's second start, um, beat the Model Kingdom, who looks a very good horse. Um, and I'm going to get into, you know, the form of Dark Raven's runs in a second. But I think that price differential of, you know, a horse at almost 3 to 1, touching 3 to 1, compared to a horse at 33 to 1, I would always look for the, for the value in the market. And I believe that that value currently sits with Dark Raven. So if we look at Dark Raven's um, three runs to date, like I said, um, a slightly strange career so far. Came out on debut at Leopardstown in March 2021. Um, field of 12 rivals and won by seven and a half lengths. An impressive debut. That was a flat race over two miles. On his second start, again came out over two miles, a flat race, um, this time against 11 rivals and won by 11 lengths. So another smart victory. Um, interestingly, back in third was a horse called So Scottish, 18 lengths back in third. And Sco So Scottish is favourite for the plate at this year's festival. Um, so those runs were, you know, two years ago now, we're talking early 2021, um, <clears throat> but impressive nonetheless. Then Dark Raven suffered a setback and we didn't see him again until December of last year, December 2022, where he came out again over two miles, but this time over hurdles um, and won nicely. So it was a field of 20 rivals. He went off at evens, so it was very well backed. Um, and him and a horse called Dr. Bravo, they finished first and second, were 13 lengths clear of the rest of the field. Um, but what's most interesting about that is Dr. Bravo this week, yesterday as I'm recording this, um, went out and gave that form a really nice boost. Um, Dr. Bravo beat a horse called the Big Doyen. Those two pulled 14 lengths clear in a 17 runner field at Down Royal. Um, and the Big Doyen actually has good form himself. He beat a horse called Hunter's Yarn earlier in the season. Um, what's interesting there is obviously Dark Raven is 33 to 1 for the Ballymore. Dark Raven beat Dr. Bravo, who beat the Big Doyen, who beat Hunter's Yarn, and Hunter's Yarn is currently sitting at 33 to 1 for the Ballymore. So the same price as Dark Raven. Um, I think that represents value. Now, there's more to it than that. Obviously, there's different distances, different times in the season, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but quite simply, I think that shows in general. I mean, maybe Hunter's Yarn is too short a price, um, but I think, again, that's another reason in general why Dark Raven's price is um, potentially higher than it should be. The next thing to consider is um, the Dublin Racing Festival, um, which is in approximately 10 days from now, um, the following weekend. Dark Raven is running in the Irish Novices Hurdle against Fasol Vega over two miles. Um, that's interesting in itself because, like I said earlier, Dark Raven has the supreme entry over two miles. Um, I'm hoping and I believe Dark Raven will go for the Ballymore. Um, but, but he may not. You know, If he comes out and um, beats Vassar Vega, then I think he'd probably go in the supreme. But what I'm hoping to see from that race is you know, Dark Raven run a good race, maybe looks like he needs a little bit further and then go to the Ballymore. Um, so there we go. That's it. My second selection is Dark Raven at 33 to 1 for the Ballymore. Um, <clears throat> if you are betting, you know, it's, it's an outside selection. Um, it could look very silly if he does run in the Supreme. Um, you know, maybe have an each way bet to, for a bit more safety if you want to secure some places there as well. Maybe have an insurance bet on the Supreme. Um, but a nice horse with good form lines that I believe... Um, you know, at 33 to 1 represents good value. That's it. Thanks again for watching. Like I say, please do subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Please comment if you have any thoughts. Uh, and I'll be back soon with my third selection.